Hey, welcome to Woodport Guitars. Thanks for stopping by. Today, we're gonna turn this piece of oak. I shot this video a few days ago and the audio was almost unusable. Instead of trashing the footage or reshooting, some things can't be recreated, the marks are made, I decided to do a dialogue replacement. So if it looks like an old Shaw Brothers late 70s kung fu movie, you know why. Hi, welcome to Woodport Guitars. Today, we're gonna take this piece of oak and turn it into a fretboard. So we'll have to put some marks for the fret slots, marks for the fret markers. Then we'll cut those slots, drill the marker holes. I have to decide on the material I'm going to use, what color, because this is going to be a black stained guitar, and glue it to the neck. And we'll be ready for the next step. This fretboard is going to go with this neck, with this cool scarf joint, like so. And this small piece is the heel, which will be inside the box, but poking out a front a little. And here we have the three string bridge we're gonna use. And this is going in this box. So this is the Camacho box. I'm calling this the Camacho build. And on the Woodport Guitars channel, you will find a playlist that will have all the videos pertaining to this build. So be sure and subscribe, ring the notification bell, so you know when the next videos come out. At this point in the build, I like to stack everything and just get a rough idea of where everything is laying. So I'll take my fretboard and I'm leaving enough room for the nut and just lay it on there. Then we take our fret scale, which is a 20, you can probably barely see this, it's a 24.75 inch fret scale and in metric that is 628.65 millimeters so viewers in the metric world when you talk about fret scale lengths do you use the metric or do you just use inches like a 25 inch scale uh, stratocaster is 25 and a half inch scale uh, i'm just curious should i keep using the metric conversions or do you guys use our american inches so I line up the nut and kind of center it. I mean, I'm not looking to be exact right at this point. Then I will take this yardstick. Yeah, so if we have yardsticks, oh, you got meter sticks, right? What do you call them? Just curious. I want the bridge at 24 and 3 quarter. But I also want the bridge farther back on the box because we're going to have a pickup. I'd really like to see the bridge that far back. Guessing that's uh, about a half inch, five eighths from this back side. That's just where I want it because I want room for a pickup up here. So I and everybody up again, just quick look. I'm liking where this is lining up. Everything looking pretty good. So I just kind of close the box lid down so I can get an idea. And, and I'm just short of 18 inches. All right, this piece of oak I'm using for the fretboard is tw 24 inches long, inch and a half wide, and a quarter inch thick. In metric, that would be 609.6 millimeters long, 38 millimeters wide, and 6.38 millimeters thick. Now you guys in the metric world, sometimes I round and let me know if that's a good thing or do you want me to carry it out to a decimal point? Um, really makes no difference to me. I'm just curious. All right, I'm gonna have to bring this other camera around so I can show you guys a little bit better what's going on here yeah you're gonna be in the frame so can you even see this thing all right so this fret scale which you can't really wow it really don't even show up okay well this fret scale has no <laughs> there shows up better on that camera it has no center line mark not that I see on it I do not see. It'd be nice if there was a some kind of a line in it, but I love this template. So since 
it has no center line, I can either line it up with this edge, and there's little slots here to make marks, or I can pull it this way and line up the slot ends with this edge of my board. Then I can mark all the slots out. I'm looking to see if, like imperfections in the wood or anything I don't like. Do I want to shift it one end or the other? And that's what's kind of nice about this. You get to do whatever you want. All right, that's where I want it. I'd love to have this taped down, but that's not going to happen. So you're going to get to see a quick and dirty drawing of the frets. Okay. So I don't have this taped down, which honestly is a mistake. Now, my piece of wood that I'm using for this fretboard is an inch and a half from one end to the other. If you're using any kind of reclaimed wood, check it. See if it is actually the same width all the way from one end to the other. If not, you might have to draw a center line on that board and then lay your frets out square from that center line because you want them square and with, oh, I'm not cutting that one. Okay. So now I have to just eyeball center for these frets. And with the 12th and 24th, it's a little easier. All right. So when it comes to the fret marker material, I have a choice. I can either do dowels like I did on the twins, or I can do plugs. The difference is with dowels, the end grain will show. With plugs, the side grain will show. And more often than not, that I have found, in grain will stain or finish darker than side grain. So since this is going to be a black stained guitar, I'm thinking I'm going to use um, probably the same material dowel that I used on the other on the twins, which is um, some maranta or something. But it's got a really cool in grain look. I will probably use that because it's going to stain a bit darker than this oak side grain. At least I'm hoping so. But even if it doesn't, I'm okay with these things being barely visible. I think that'll actually look pretty cool. To cut the fret slots, I'm using a miter box from CB Giddy. Now I'd like to upgrade to this miter box, but for now we're using this one. The saw is a Kona dovetail saw. It has a 0 .020 inch kerf. And this matches the tang of the fret wire I use. I will leave links to these in the description below. When you put your fretboard in the miter box, make sure you are referencing the same edge that you use to align the template.
The depth of your fret slot should be the same as the tang on the fret wire. In my case, it is 1.3 millimeters. So I will use some blue tape to make a depth gauge. Now take your time cutting these. It pays off. Next is to drill out the fret marker holes. I use a quarter inch straight cut router bit because I like the flat bottom hole it leaves and a nice clean cut edge. For the fret markers, I can either make a dowel like I did on the twins build or I can cut plugs. So just in case you were wondering, I have the depth stop set so that this router bit will not go all the way through the fretboard. Here, let me give you a closer look and you will see that it doesn't even go all the way down to the table. And that's thanks to a depth stop. Pretty cool. All right, here I'm going to finalize some marks, or at least on the fretboard. So I've lined up the nut, the yardstick, got it all where I pretty much, yep, I like where it's sitting, everything's good. So I'm going to mark the fretboard where the box and the fretboard meet, and I'm going to cut that off. Then I'm going to glue this to the neck. Gluing the fretboard onto the neck can be a challenge with that much glue surface. It wants to move around on you. So this time I will let the glue sit just a minute till it starts to get tacky. Then I will put the two boards together and rub them back and forth slightly. Learn that from a guy using hide glue. Not quite the same, but it helps.
So you can see I used a couple of clamps with a couple little pieces of wood to keep the fretboard and the neck even while I put on these other clamps. Everything wants to move when you have this much glue, so really pay attention and just keep checking it. And you might have to loosen your clamps, move it a little bit, and tighten it all back up. That's what you have to do. So now it's in the clamps, we wait. So the next video, we'll cut the neck slot in the box and get the neck fitted. So thanks for watching. I hope you got something from the video and I hope you come back to watch the rest of the build. Please like, comment, subscribe, share. All those things help the channel grow and I really appreciate it. Until next time, have fun. Have fun. Have fun. Have fun. Have fun, you must have.